Good morning and welcome to Cab Notes for December 2014. This morning we'd like to talk a little bit about uh, what it takes to do volunteer production. As you, some of you viewers know, there's many people in town who do volunteer production of all kinds and there could be a lot more. I think there's a big need for more local conversation. Uh, and the two members of the production staff here at CAT-TV have very kindly uh, consented to be part of our little discussion this morning, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, Beck and uh, oh, yeah, okay. go, yeah, go ahead. Tell us who Ladies you are first. and where you came from and why you got oh. interested in video. All right, that's that's an interesting one actually. So I'm Beck Lundve. I'm actually not from anywhere near around here. I grew up in Connecticut, and my mom was always really into photography. Mm -hmm. So I kind of picked that up really early in my life. And then later on, I went to school at UMass in Massachusetts. And I started as a computer systems engineer uh -huh. and hated it, but still kind of liked the technology part. Yeah. Just not the math part. And I decided to change majors and double major in journalism and social thought and political economy, which wow. is basically a social justice oriented thing which kind of the combination of those things led me to an internship at a local access station in Northampton uh -huh. and then after that I followed my boyfriend to Bennington because he's also in journalism and he writes for the newspaper in town uh -huh. and then I ended up here and awesome it's cool yeah yeah I think we're extremely lucky here at TV to have Beck and Ryan in our production department, and it's just uh, inspiration for all of us. So, Ryan, what, give us a little background on, on your tour. <laughs> sure. Um, I was born in Bennington. Um, I went to MAU and went to the CDC class. Uh, I took that with Tim Foley, video production. Oh, really? Wow. Um, even prior to that, though, in, uh, when I went to Ben L, I took with Mr. Swisher before he went to the CDC. Oh, yeah. I did some AV stuff, so we were using you know VHS cameras and... Uh -huh old equipment. I actually forgot about that until recently, but yeah. Uh, so that made me, or that gave me an interest in some media classes, um, mm -hmm. video production, and then I went to MCLA in North Adams, Mass. Oh yeah. And studied film production and mm -hmm. decided to pursue it as a career. Yeah. So mm -hmm. fortunately, recently, the position came available when I was in search of a job. So yeah. here we are. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, the one thing that comes to my mind is early on, Greg Epler Wood, who was, I guess, the first executive director of mm -hmm. Cat TV years ago, was interested in trying to differentiate between cable casting and broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make sure that we knew we were cable casting, and he obviously felt that was some, somehow superior to broadcasting. And of course, broadcasting includes this. You know, just infinite amounts of you know, mind-boggling commercialism. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> from so, large corporations and yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's your sense of uh, the balance between cable casting and how possible that is here, and how much it might be able to, you know, increase the well-being of the community mm -hmm. as compared to a lot of more you know, commercial TV. I think we have the advantage at a place like Cat TV and any other access center across the country. Mm -hmm. um, by federal law, where we are given the right to provide that voice for the community, so mm -hmm. the laws currently protect our ability to broadcast and provide us a channel to broadcast on through. You know, for us, it's Comcast. Yeah. And Lisa, our executive director, is battling daily. In addition to running Cat TV and everything yeah. else she does, she's battling daily to try to protect those rights. So mm -hmm. it's um, it's just crazy that we have to fight so hard that that actually almost interferes, at least for Lisa, with our ability to um, put as much time as we could into um, broadcasting yeah. what we do here because we now have to protect our our ability to broadcast in addition to broadcasting. So mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of time, as I was saying, but um, this is one of the true ways through Cat TV and other 
other similar organizations. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a really nice way for people to get their voice out there because we don't yeah. regulate what people say. Right. We broadcast what people give us as long as it doesn't violate FCC rules, which there aren't many we're too concerned with. I mean, mm -hmm. we follow the rules we're supposed to, but mm -hmm. we do not filter what people give us to broadcast, what people produce here. Yeah. We, we put it out there because it's their voice that's being heard. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a cool, that's a really cool resource for community members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Beck, do you have any feelings or ideas about, you said you studied something about social action or uh, kind of thing? Yeah, um, I mean, kind of springboarding off of what Ryan was saying, I think one of the challenges that we have in kind of providing the service that we do to the community currently is that kind of as time's going on, we're living in a more digital age and people mm -hmm. aren't necessarily looking at cable TV as much as they used to. And so we have this great resource here, but people don't know about it, people don't know how to use it mm -hmm. because it's kind of not on their radar. You're seeing more and more people who don't even get cable TV because they can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have cable TV. I work here and I don't have cable. Yeah. So I think kind of one of the biggest things that we need to focus on and that I wish there were more resources for all local access stations to focus on is that instead of just the cable companies saying, here are cable resources, you have a few channels, go crazy, I wish there was some sort of way that they would give us to kind of integrate into a more digital mm. environment. Uh -huh. and Potentially I think, HD even. Right. And I think that mm -hmm. would help a great deal. And I think that's something that looking forward is going to need to be addressed yeah. pretty significantly. Because that will help bring in more people in the community mm -hmm. if we can kind of broaden where we can communicate. Yeah. Well, I understand. Maybe I should have Alex in here. That the... Uh, some of these programs, some programs that are done here are put online? Yeah, we upload, oh jeez, what do we have, thousands of videos up there now? I mean, Probably. We upload a lot of content to YouTube, but uh -huh. um, it's, it, I mean, it goes, we put up our meetings, we put up special productions. Uh -huh. um, it would be cool if there was still a way to broadcast or stream online in a almost like a live nature, live format, where oh. people are still watching what's on our channels in the way we broadcast on our channels mm. online. That would be awesome if we could do that. I mm. mean, it is possible to stream, but it's also very expensive. Um, uh -huh. But at least we do have the ability to upload to YouTube, and we do, Becca's really good about keeping track of the YouTube page and um, keeping it up to date. I mean, within a day or two of most of our events, meetings, or broadcasts, I mean, you can find them on YouTube, and we have a lot of people that rely on that, too, for mm -hmm. writing articles for newspapers, for, <laughs> <laughs> but even um, the people that are part of the boards, like the select boards, school boards, mm -hmm. they, they find that very reliable so that they can write up their notes for part of their job, even, yeah. um, mm -hmm. to get the information out for really whatever people whatever people would watch the stuff on TV for, they can find it on YouTube. But it is tough to keep people aware of that. I mean, we can tell people all day, look on YouTube for this, but mm -hmm. we don't know if they're actually going to. Yeah, so now if I wanted to look for something on YouTube, what would I have to do? Just uh, type YouTube into the... If you went to YouTube.com, you could search on the search bar, you could type in Cat TV Bennington, and that would bring you... Oh. to our page, which uh -huh. our YouTube channel has uh, different playlists, different more or less channels within the channel. It's like categories where everything's posted. Uh -huh. So that's one way. I mean, you could sometimes find links on Facebook even, or you could even just go on to YouTube and it could work if you type in the right keywords without typing in Cat TV Bennington. You could probably mm -hmm. type in like Bennington Select Meeting yeah. and you might get, mm -hmm. you might find it. The problem is there's so much on YouTube now that it's harder to find things. Yeah, yeah. There's You might get sponsored, you might get 10 ads or sponsored videos before you find what you're actually searching for, which mm -hmm. I find interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so there, even YouTube that 
allows us another way to more or less broadcast or get in- information out there to send media to our viewers. Even that's overrun by ads and commercialism. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> then you're watching a YouTube video and ads pop up. There are ads on the side. The yeah. video is interrupted with ads. You can't watch the video until, in some cases, until the ad plays first. Mm-hmm. So even free resources like that are not, I mean, they're still money makers for the Good people selling the ads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't yeah. know if that answered your question. I sort of, sort of got on a rant about No, that's very good. Ads, yeah. though. Uh, I just arbitrarily typed in cab notes, you know, the name of the yeah. show. And, oh, there's one of my shows. You see, which one was that, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't know who put it on there or why it's there or whether all of them are there. I didn't do that one, actually. That one was there already. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe Dan. So, yeah. you know, it, it may have been five years old or two years old. Oh, or cool. Six months old. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I could have identified it eventually if I watched it long enough. Yeah. But uh, that would be cool to get. Yeah. All of, I don't know how many episodes you've produced, but that mm. would be awesome if all of them were on, or at least the past few years, or maybe mm. the first few seasons. It'd be a nice way to archive the episodes. Yeah, yeah. Which brings us to this box right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. For years, uh, it seemed there was a rack in Alex's office there. I guess there still is a rack. They had all the old shows in, and you go up to your you know, cab notes or whatever. Mm program you're producing and you could find almost all of them <clears throat> but now I'm not sure wow. what is this how many of these <laughs> yeah that's well what happened was my daughter moved back into our house you know and she turned to one bedroom that had these videos in uh-huh. uh, into her office so they had to go <laughs> yep so um, um, no it's as far as I'm concerned all my past shows are Gone, erased, you know, inaccessible. So I, I I wouldn't know where to find them, unless I have them on these tapes. Oh yeah, that's you know, a good copy. Point. Physical of copies, but uh, not that I have any great desire to go back and redo them. <laughs> yeah, but I always feel my focus should be more to the future and mm. what we should be doing or can be doing, rather than what's happened. So, um, now, which I guess brings us back to you know, what, what what's the focus of my show? What's What's what can be a constructive or helpful, you know, production to do here, as far as you know, volunteer production. Uh, I know sometimes <clears throat> there are people like Al Chicote and some other guy years ago used to do a program. I think it was called Around Bennington, and oh, yeah. they just go around and they video all kinds of interesting things happening around town. Mm-hmm. And I know Claude Dern for years. I don't know how long it was, 20 years? <laughs> yeah. The, he had the uh, county forester, mm-hmm. and he was you know, big into forestry. He has his own lumber mill up in Sandgate, Ireland, or somewhere. Mm-hmm. And you know, month, I guess it was a monthly show. You know, yeah. It would uh, give you some really fascinating, interesting technical information about how our forests grow and the wildlife and all those things. And he had his, his bear, you know, he had for a many... Oh, the talking bear, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there are shows like that that uh, help people to, you know, get f- more familiar with what's going on around town. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, a lot of those programs there are Sage City Symphony or oh, very cool. the it's Benning County Coral nice Society. You know, um, we try to Ooh, yeah. you know, publicize those programs because obviously there's lots of people who can't get out to the concert to see them. Yeah. And... We figure it's you know, local people performing locally, mm-hmm. and it might be interesting to um, see that. Um, the one one aspect of production that you're probably <laughs> familiar with is the difficulty of finding, you know, um, helpers. <laughs> you no, know, if you're gonna go on video or something, <laughs> in you know, St. Peter's Church or mm-hmm. at the Vapa and Benning College, you have to have three camera people and somebody run the. the uh, Tricaster. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe you could just speak a little bit about the, your recruiting program and how successful that is. You, you have classes, right, for people, mm-hmm. orientations? I think, um, I mean, I've been here a little over a year. I know it's not that long, but it's enough time to have a little experience. Yeah. Realizing how challenging it really is to get people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I. Th- it seems like now people have... 
I don't, I guess you could say more going on in their lives, but I think it's also that the things they're doing or spending their time on are, they're different. Like, it seems like people aren't really going out and getting involved as much as, I mean, I don't, maybe it's not true, but it seems like maybe people aren't getting involved as much as they used to because now people are so occupied with everything else, all the communication as far as like, you know, being on their phone, meetings, yeah. conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It just seems like people don't show up very frequently looking for a way to learn about video or to produce a show. It seems like with Darlene, Darlene Young is our outreach coordinator. She spends a lot of time outreaching or reaching out to mm-hmm. people. Um, yeah to get people to come in. I don't know that we've always had to spend a lot of time doing that. It seems like, uh-huh. like with Vermont Forest, Claude Dern, Al Chicote, yeah, there was a really steady flow. I get the impression there was a really steady flow of content. Um, mm-hmm. People producing things as from the perspective of the citizens of the area. I mean, yeah. the community members. Now, I mean, that still happens quite a bit. Like, you guys do a lot, mm-hmm. but... I, I get the sense that people are not as active. There aren't as many active people in the community in terms of producing content or mm-hmm. showing interest in learning about what they can do. Yeah. I wonder if some of that has to do with the availability of technology. That's actually totally what I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that I think part of it is that people earlier on, especially in kind of the more analog age, it was really expensive and really difficult for people yeah. to get <clears throat> sorry I'm kind of sick uh, for people to get <laughs> their hands on video technology mm-hmm. you kind of relied on these centers to get you the ability mm-hmm. to even it's film yes. you know your mm-hmm. town concert or whatever whereas now almost everyone has a phone that can take pictures and at least a little bit of video there's mm-hmm it's so much more accessible to everyone to produce their own digital media and that's great that's really cool except for the fact that they still don't have a way to really effectively distribute that like you can (laughs) share a picture with your friends on Facebook but what if it's a really great picture and it could have been in the newspaper because I remember way back when I was a kid people used to send photos to the newspaper if they thought it was a cool Hmm. like Mm -hmm. town picture they got and now people don't really do that Mm -hmm. And I think kind of that element of actually participating in the community. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Like community media has kind of been dying off because people don't realize that they just don't realize they're not participating in it anymore because Mm -hmm. they get kind of the instant gratification Mm -hmm. of what (laughs) what they have in their hands already they think is great and they don't realize that what pretty much everyone has some sort of cool story that they could be telling through something like mm-hmm. local access TV, mm-hmm. but a lot of people aren't thinking to do it anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I th- yeah the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just to interject here, the, as you may have noticed, the banner is starting to print pictures. I saw just that feature the, the, and I loved it. Weeks or months of, of special pictures that people want to send in. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. cool. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, it's awesome. That yeah. Is, yeah, I'll have yeah. to check that out. Yeah, you're going to say... Um, I, I, like, you're definitely right. Everyone has a story. Everyone has, there are so many interesting things going on, so many stories people could tell. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what unfortunately lends to the great success of reality TV. Nothing, I'm not bashing reality TV. I'm just saying, like, mm-hmm. this is reality TV. There we go. There we go. Real people on yeah. TV. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. I think people see that the common man or the everyday person is interesting and we all have great stories but Mm -hmm. then people say oh well every reality show can't be the same so now we have to say oh some housewives of some person who's not quite famous let's make them famous and then let's so I think the topics of course people want all these different reality shows because Mm -hmm. you have to make it them different in order for that to succeed I think you can't have ten shows that are exactly the same so it's kind of unfortunate that that's sort of become fake, staged. Oh, yeah. The unscripted television is... I mean, I understand because just feasibility, making a, an interesting episode, you kind of you need to sort of stage things, I guess. But 
unless you want to spend weeks following someone around with a camera and looking for the one hour that's interesting. But yeah. um, I think there's still a lot of opportunity for people to tell their story mm-hmm. through places like Cat TV and going back to like the accessibility of technology. Um, just because like people can shoot really nice HD video on their cell phone. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not professionally done, but that's fine. Um, we can broadcast things. People don't yeah. need to use our cameras to sh- to shoot. I mean, they can. If it's something that is in a format we can play, mm-hmm. we can play it, and we will play it. So that I, th- I think it's it'd also be great if we could get that word out to uh, communicate oh. that to community members, saying, oh, yeah. even if you don't produce something on our cameras. We, we can still put your student videos, your home, not home videos necessarily, but mm-hmm. your home produced or your the things you produce, we can broadcast because that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. And then we can help you improve the sound quality, improve the lighting, improve the overall quality. Uh, we, can, yeah. we have a lot of people rely on Cat TV. Mm-hmm. 15, 16, 17, three channels. Um, there's a lot of airtime there to broadcast, so yeah. there's a lot of opportunity. And we get we do have a lot of content. I mean, right now we have so much content that we actually have to wait to schedule some of it. But really? not on all three channels mm-hmm. because there are three different channels. So right. some of our channels are overflowing with content, while others we have room to broadcast a lot more. Yeah. So mm-hmm. arts There's, and education channel could always use more. My definitely. favorite of the three channels, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There. There was a guy. I've, Getting his name now, he moved over to Saratoga Springs. You might have heard of him, who had uh, a program here called In Tune, you know, and almost every week I think it was he had a different musical oh, group, cool. you know, with all these little startup, you no know, uh, bands that kids start in high school or, or, or <laughs> elsewhere, you know, and they and they would play right here. Yeah, they'd be playing in the studio. Let's bring cool. that back. Let's do it. Seriously, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I noticed last night they had uh, oh, Steve Gillette and Cindy Mangson. That was great, were, yeah. Were uh, performing here, or mm-hmm. making a video. So it's yeah, and that was in your friends and neighbors, Willie Jones show. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, that should be, whenever the schedule allows it to play, um, it should play. It'll play in December. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that'll be coming out soon. <laughs> yeah. So it's. Uh, <coughs> you know what? I wonder if it would be feasible to maybe have an open, kind of an open mic night or day. William and I talked about that, yeah. That would be uh, fun. So you say, okay, every Wednesday night from 7 to 9, you know, <laughs> any musical group that wants to come in can come in and get in front of the cameras. And that would be cool, yeah. Make a program out of it. Do you want to help produce that with us? Well. <laughs> you can help get the word out yeah. if you're willing to be here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, that would be awesome. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there are a lot of open mics at cafes, restaurants, like Public House, South right. Street Cafe, lots of locations in town, so mm-hmm. we could maybe even collaborate on something. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've been doing a lot of, or more, much more musical content lately. Um, we've covered yeah. things at Bennington College. We've had people come into the studio. Yeah. Um, Chris, one of our employees here, he, mm-hmm. he's a musician, so mm-hmm. he's been covering a lot of music events and producing music oh, yeah. content, so... But we, we'd like to do even more than that. So And we'd like other mm-hmm. people to do even more than that. So yeah. it doesn't just have to come from us. People mm-hmm. can go out and if they're going to open mic, they can come here, grab a camera, a microphone, and go to open mic and set up the camera. Uh-huh. If people are going to a school concert, a school play, a band concert, a chorus concert, mm-hmm. anything even non-music related, um, yeah. Any school event, any public event, anything that's that they the person thinks is interesting. You know, if they're going to it, it must be interesting. Mm-hmm. So why not put it on TV? Because yeah. other people will like it too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, then, stepping one further, <laughs> making one more step about doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, no, I've been doing this myself for a long time, and I, I frequently run into. You know, question question marks when I get on site about well is this camera really recording or is, oh yeah am I getting sound in this camera um, maybe you could just pick up one of those cameras and show us what the different features are in a camera that you might take out to the field sure so, um, well, which one do you want <laughs> we could 
Yeah. Maybe start with the, the current camera. <laughs> oh, the one that's harder to get to? Dude. <laughs> so over time, oh. uh, there's been quite a, a change in cameras. You know, when I started out, there was these big things. <laughs> oh, VHS cameras probably? Yeah. Or even before that. And you could actually record the program in the VHS, take the mm -hmm. VHS tape out, yep. and then you go to the... For all you <laughs> who don't know what a VHS looks like. Yeah, right. Those are probably <laughs> almost station. as old as I am. They could be. You put in, you put in the, the uh, part you had to be in the front, you know, a disclaimer and a part in the back, and you could actually take a home and look at it. But now... That's a good point. You know, you can explain about the, the transition from tapes to uh, mini cassettes to cards. Yeah, this is actually pretty much what I learned on. Um, oh, really? I won't say what year that was. <laughs> um, well, I mean, actually, prior to that, I learned on old VHS cameras. Mm -hmm. They were larger than these studio cameras here, which you can't see. Um, mm -hmm. These record, this is an old uh, Sony PD-150. So this is like, this was at the time cutting edge. This was, I don't know how much it cost, probably at least a couple grand. Yeah. Three chip camera. It was shot really nice video at the time, but it records on this small mini DV tape. You can play the mini DV tape, but I never knew of anyone at home who had a, a like a VCR equivalent to a to play a DV. You'd have to play it through the camera into either a computer or to your TV to view uh -huh. the footage, uh -huh. or on the camera itself. Um, so yeah, this records on a tape. Mm -hmm. One potential disadvantage, which people notice now, um, in order to capture or put the footage into a computer mm -hmm. to do anything with it, to edit, to burn a DVD, you'd have to play the tape back, like physically hit play and let it roll through. So that's real time. I mean, if, the, yeah. if you shot an hour of footage, you have to play back an hour of footage and then do things with it. Uh -huh. With something like that, I mean, you take the flash card out, stick it in a computer, mm -hmm or some, what, however you want to get the footage into your computer, you can transfer the file over and view it almost instantaneously, but then you don't have to wait for the whole tape to play through because there is no tape. Um, also the quality, I mean the picture quality here, when you put these side by side, we've used similar cameras and like a newer camera and an older camera in one program. Oh yeah. When we cut between the two cameras, you could, during uh, battle day for example, oh you can really see the quality has significantly improved on the newer cameras. Hmm. So the disadvantages, I mean, the quality, um, well, really, it's they weren't disadvantages at the time, but hmm. technology has obviously progressed. Those just weren't yeah. designed to be on, you know, 46-inch plasma TVs. Yeah. and. that's a good point, yeah. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, they were designed for what people had at the time, the nice... Yeah. Large TVs yeah. or large frame TVs, not mm -hmm. necessarily large screens. Mm -hmm. So now to accommodate these big screens that you see people having, you have to have a higher definition picture. Huh? Yeah, I've, I I hear all this stuff about 4K cameras and all these amazing cameras that shoot amazing quality. Some people say better than film, original film quality. Mm. That's an opinion, but <laughs> um, that's. I find that funny because I don't know of any channels that broadcast 4K. I don't know of a consumer or like a, a reasonably affordable television that can p project or play such high quality video. Oh, I, I don't know of a computer monitor mm -hmm. that I could afford that could show you what that camera is capable of. Yeah, It's sort of like watching on TV. Let's say I have my old TV from 10 years ago, mm -hmm. which I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if I'm watching a TV commercial that's advertising the brand new Sony television that's awesome, the best TV in the world, mm. how good is it really going to look on my TV when I'm watching that commercial? It's yeah. kind of a funny concept, but sorry. So go ahead. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the total compatibility between the, the camera and the, the, uh, yeah. the set that's uh, playing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you really need, I mean, if you're going to buy a $10,000 camera, you need to upgrade everything, really, to mm -hmm. accommodate that. Yeah. But and nothing bad about the, the yeah. stuff. One of the kind of interesting problems now is that more and more frequently cameras are 
coming out that want to only work in HD or only shoot mm -hmm. in widescreen because TVs aren't being built in the old aspect ratio anymore. That's just not really a popular thing. Oh, wow. That's true. So there's, of course, we broadcast the old aspect ratio. So if you have an older TV, CAT TV is perfect. If you have a widescreen TV, CAT TV either gets stretched so everyone's really short and wide, <laughs> or you have the black bars on the side and you're not getting as much quality or as much field of vision as you could. Mm -hmm. And so kind of reconciling the cameras and what they want to produce with that <laughs> sure. is kind of an ordeal sometimes. And that's, I think, one of the things we're kind of fighting for in Montpelier is to be able to kind of have equal access mm -hmm. to broadcast in HD mm. because, you know, local stations are kind of getting left behind in that yeah. regard. The short and, end of the stick. <laughs> right, and now that yeah. cameras, even of, like relatively inexpensive cameras, are kind of surpassing what mm. we have the capability to put out over the channels. Huh. You that, can buy a $200 HD camera now that shoots right. probably better than, potentially higher resolution than this camera here. It's possible. Is this the Z7? Yeah. Yep, and that's not, right. ten, that's not 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. That's slightly less. It's um, it's HDV, so it's a slightly lower picture quality. We have HD cameras. We're shooting this in HD today, actually. Uh -huh. um, but it's just isn't that funny? I mean, like I was saying, my phone or a two hundred dollar camera shoots better quality than we're allowed to broadcast. Than better than Comcast allows us to broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. Should we be complaining about this on the air? <laughs> yeah, so, you, we have that. Hear us. We have that right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is our voice, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Free speech. So, so re referencing Montpelier, this, you're implying that there's some state legislation that could re control, regulate, or expand the possibilities, or something. Mm -hmm. This is something that our executive director would be much more suited mm -hmm. to explain That's true. than us, mm. but. Essentially, the agreements between Comcast and access centers are kind of filtered through the state, in a sense, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. kind of Comcast doesn't want to give good things, but stations want good things, and the state kind of has to step in and help that mesh oh. into an agreement mm -hmm. that fits the law that yeah. was written, when was that, like the early 90s that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I think so. The law that basically says cable companies have to provide resources mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. local broadcasting. Right, yeah. Yeah, now the technology is surpassing what those laws regulate. So those laws, oh. when they were written, probably, I don't know, but they probably allowed us or places like Cat TV to put out current, relevant, up-to-date technology or put out quality just like any other channel, but mm -hmm. those laws, I believe, are not updated to accommodate the technology. Mm -hmm. So that's how, and one way that we're being left behind in the sense that yeah. now we're limited in what we can do. We still broadcast on three channels 24-7. Yeah. We own, or not own, but we own the, the airspace on those three channels, but there are just a lot of issues surrounding that. A lot of limitations. Mm -hmm. So you really need some kind of a strong advocate. <laughs> Maybe that's what Lisa's doing. Yeah, she is statewide and potentially even nationally. Bring so. these things up to up to speed, really. Yeah. With Comcast into shape. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, yeah, I'm sure it's always. With their 100 foot LED TV in the lobby in mm. Philly. I'd like one of those. <laughs> really? Yeah, it, the TV, it the walls and the rest of the room have a certain pattern. That TV, certain times throughout the day, broadcast or projects, probably doesn't technically project, but projects the wall. So you don't even see this TV. It's in, it, you do not see it. It looks like the wall, and then all of a sudden it turns on, it, it shows like a snowboarder flying down a mountain, probably in Vermont. Yeah. Right up close, like a 200 foot or 100 foot snowboarder, and then it goes back to a wall. It's crazy. <laughs> but yet they can't let us broadcast even one channel of HD. Hmm. Anyway. 
We're not bitter. <laughs> Everything's fine. Let's get the handcuffs and... Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I'm not chaining myself to any buildings. I have stuff to do. Well, we could get some cheesesteaks, some Philly cheesesteaks or some pretzels and oh. hang out in Philly. That works. Oh. It's cold now, though. Yeah. <laughs> but less cold there than here. Oh, yeah. It's closer to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I have a, a nephew in Philadelphia who uh, does those murals. You know, oh, cool. You know, talk about a wall turning into a picture, you know, yeah. instantaneously. Well, his walls turn into pictures hmm. over numerous arduous months oh, wow. <laughs> as he paints these you know, murals there. You know, that would be a good cat notes topic, to have him come in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Show some work. Yeah, there's always, you may have seen the mural on the wall over in Hoosick Falls. I think they re tried to reproduce a Grandma Maybe. Moses picture. Yeah. Yeah, I think I know downtown, kind of. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So there's, you know, in every town, there's blank walls, you know, mm -hmm. that would really make the scene more exciting if they were a picture. That would be cool. Yeah. So it, we have walls it, here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting that the, the TV thing can turn a wall into a picture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Hmm. So um, when people go on to a site to shoot, you know, Mm -hmm. You know, the things that are involved <laughs> that, uh, you know, say, like, like setting up for the <clears throat> shoot at the Southern Vermont College for the graduation, mm -hmm. you know, always seems pretty extensive. I know my experience is that <clears throat> more often than not, if I'm going to a, an occasion, you know, I get there before anybody else and yep. I leave after everybody else. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, and uh, are, are there any kind of... Uh, <clears throat> technical changes that you can mention that have been made over the years that try to, you know, control that extreme use of time? I think it's uh, just recently, um, mm. one other person and I, we, we went out and set up at Bennington College with mm. the TriCaster, which is a mobile studio, essentially. It's yeah. you, like what we're using one right now. We hook three cameras into this computer and yeah. on a, a screen, a flat screen, we <laughs> we see all three cameras and we switch. Mm. I mean, I know you know, but for people at home, you yeah. switch between those cameras. Right. And I use the baseball game analogy. If you look at a baseball game, they have multiple cameras. Someone right. or a, a large group of people, they team up and basically put this production together so they switch between all these cameras one on the pitcher one on the batter or whatever mm -hmm. and one camera at a time is being broadcast at home and recorded for replay yeah. so we can do that mobile like we can take that studio setup bring everything out and set up but I currently we I think we can streamline it and really hook up everything relatively quickly so it might even take I mean potentially a half an hour to an hour with even two people mm -hmm. to set up for something like that. Yeah. And that's actually not too bad. I mean, I think at, at times we've had three or four hour setups. So you can make yeah. it very efficient, but mm -hmm. even more efficient than that, you could take a single camera with the right microphones, mm -hmm. even one microphone, a tripod, go out, set it up in five minutes, and actually yeah. get the same effect by zooming in, zooming out, panning, tilting, just moving the camera around. You can yeah. simulate all those different shots that you're getting from multiple cameras. So mm -hmm. it it's it can be very complicated or yeah. involved, but you can also simplify the process and get very nice results. So for people at home or people with less experience, mm -hmm. even in a few, maybe two hour, three hour sessions, you can learn all that you need to know in order to do something <coughs> like that and eventually even take out the TriCaster and multiple cameras and set up something more involved. So we mm -hmm. actually have classes here at Cat TV. Mm -hmm. We can cater to people's schedules in most cases, uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah. We can teach them how to use cameras, lights, tripods, microphones. Sounds like a lot of stuff, but really it's a pretty simple setup once you understand what everything's for. Mm -hmm. And you can go out and tell the world whatever you really want. I mean. There was a yeah. guy who really, he was a very skilled 
fiddle player, if that's the right term, fiddleist, mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he was really interested. He had no experience with video. He was very interested in doing that. So he took mm. our classes, uh-huh. learned how to grab a camera, go out and produce nice pieces with people playing fiddles. Mm. So that's just one example. I mean, he came in saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Uh-huh. Within maybe two days, he was shooting videos himself. Uh-huh. So it's, it's not mm. tough at all if you just take a few evenings out of your day, work with us to schedule something. Yeah. We can get people up and running, and you don't have to pay to use our gear. That's, what, that's mm. part of the resource we provide for the community. We, mm-hmm. well, we do that for nonprofits, for anyone. It doesn't, you don't have to be part of a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. You can just take out cameras as long as what you produce plays on cat TV. You know, you can't just go shoot your friend's wedding for free and never broadcast something. But, you know, if you produce a piece that plays on cat TV, you can also take a copy of that video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you get that experience too, so mm-hmm. so it's great. Yeah. It's <laughs> probably not a good thing to say for my job security, but honestly, anyone <laughs> Mm. could learn what yeah. we do here mm-hmm. pretty easily if they're interested in it at all yeah. it's mm-hmm. not mm. you can produce something that looks pretty decent with very little idea what you're actually doing mm-hmm. and then just kind mm-hmm. of the longer you stick with it even if you're not doing formal learning for it, you kind of just mm-hmm. pick things up and it's very easy yeah. I've seen lots of people who know very little about technology pick up video work yeah. pretty quickly because mm. it's just if you're into it it just kind of comes naturally I think if, yeah. especially if you have a goal in mind whether you're an artist or a musician or part of a nonprofit or whatever mm. if you have the desire to get what you're doing on film mm-hmm. people seem yeah. I don't think it feels like they're trying to learn when they're working on, you know, filming it. They're mm. that's kind of not what their focus is. They're not worrying so much about oh, is this the right setting? Is this the right button? They're mm. kind of focusing on capturing moments and mm. the fact that it can kind of stay fun like that no matter what because you're always filming something different. It mm. definitely helps people get good at it without realizing that they're getting good at it that's true yeah Mm. it's kind of a neat thing to see actually over time when community members will come in at first you know their camera work might not be super great but then the more things they submit to us you can see them getting better and better and i don't Mm -hmm. think they even notice it's cool that's true yeah yeah you have to make mistakes in the beginning too or not just in the beginning yeah yeah. through the entire process I mean yeah. forever I mess stuff up all the time <laughs> yeah I mean I've gone out and had the camera on the wrong settings that was mm-hmm. my fault yeah. I was it was more elaborate it's not I mean, it's not like oh crap everyone's gonna forget how, the right settings mm-hmm. but I didn't get audio for one of my first shoots here yeah fortunately we had two cameras and recorded audio on the other camera mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah I mean you have to make mistakes to learn too mm-hmm. and it's okay I mean we're here to have fun too and mm-hmm. produce stuff for cat TV um, we're not people we don't expect people to produce things worthy of an Oscar either I mean mm-hmm. we're not going to criticize someone's uh, lighting choices or mm-hmm. whether there were choices or not I mean yeah we're not here to judge people's productions so mm-hmm. we're here to support that and educate people um, and really just do what just meet people's needs if they mm-hmm. want to learn how to set up a camera hit record and go do something you know like go play their guitar in front of a camera yeah we'll teach them that if we want if someone wants to learn how to produce an old film noir piece we'll teach them that mm-hmm. so it's really up to the member that decides to come in and learn whatever they have in mind we can support that so yeah <clears throat> and a great thing <clears throat> I've experienced over the years, of course, is that the su- support is always there. Mm-hmm. You know, how many times? I don't know how many times I've called back to Kathy. Oh, this switch doesn't work, or I'm not getting that uh, image in the screen, or. You know. Oh, we don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll okay. call you for advice too, so don't worry. Yeah, right. Uh, actually, there's one point. I know uh, they had um, cell phones that mm-hmm. you could sign out. 
Oh, oh yeah, we found those. Yeah, Wait. we still have those. <clears throat> I mean, the equipment, so you you could call back to yeah. get some device. I imagine that was discontinued because most everybody has their own cell phone. <clears throat> They're still here, phone. but we haven't yeah. used them. <laughs> uh, if anyone yeah. needs them, I'm sure we could plug a few. Because I think they're just... Um, Are they prepaid? or? Yeah, I think, I think they're so. prepaid phones, yeah. so if anyone ever needs those, we totally could still use them. Uh-huh. Which is kind of cool, actually. Yeah. I wonder if we could find cards or minutes or whatever for those phones. I bet. It could be track phones. I'm sure they still make track phone cards. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> I'm not much about cell phones either, so it's possible that these phones may still be paid for somehow. We could chat about it because I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know for sure, but, yeah. we could, you know, if that was part of someone's need, we could probably possibly figure out a way to make it work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking about cell phones, not that it's related, but I often thought sometimes in our programs, especially when we were doing interviews <coughs> with legislators, mm -hmm. that we had the legislative update for years, I guess even before I started, <coughs> Bob Harrington, who was the... Uh, From WBTN? Yeah. Yeah, would uh, interview people over at the, at the former studio, and uh, <clears throat> no, they would uh, no be able to you know, talk to people about you know, what's happened in the legislature, and um, <clears throat> I, I, at some point, at several points actually, they rigged up something so people could call in, you know. Oh yeah, and we had this whole, all this business you know, where you no. Know, Okay, no, there's somebody in the phone. Okay, there's somebody in the phone. Somebody in the phone. Okay, so then it's a, uh, you know, uh, phoner, would you please uh, you know, tell us what you want? <clears throat> so I was thinking it might be possible, or I guess it would be possible if you had a cell phone mm -hmm. on the set that, that you can call speaker that phone maybe, or? Yeah, yeah. having the speaker phone so the, the moderator could you know, listen to the question and ask whoever the talent was mm -hmm. he was interviewing. What the question was, but uh, the more the more communication you have back and forth yeah. between um, you know the viewer and the and the uh, actual program, I think would be good. I don't know whether you're familiar with the Green Mountain Challenge. That the uh, same is that like RSVP or something. Is that part? I think we did a Green Mountain Challenge RSVP. Maybe that was an event. I'm not sure. I yeah, that, that was that. probably something else. But this was oh, okay. a, a sameless program that uh, he would, more or less on a monthly basis, he would have some, you know, usually somebody in the um, entertainment world oh, come nice. in. And then he'd have questions and he'd have sponsors who would give prizes, different, hmm. he had dozen different places around town, stores, or gift shops or something. Okay. Madison's maybe go for a yeah. plant. So then he'd have questions, and the people, the talent on the program would be able to ask questions about, you know, musical things or uh, people who <clears throat> were famous in entertainment world years ago, that sort of thing. And they would talk back and forth uh, on the phone that way. But, uh, you know, to establish some kind of a interaction, mm -hmm. regular interaction between a program and an interested audience, you know, I think would help to bring more people in too. Yeah, yeah, but uh, meet whatever need someone has, maybe, right? I mean, yeah. if someone has an idea, we could figure out a way mm -hmm. to make it happen. Yeah, and again, you know, the uh, staffing was you know, quite an interesting thing. You know, you had three people on cameras, somebody to run the... <laughs> we have no people on the cameras right now. Right. <laughs> Technology's cool. Yeah, you have to... Tripods. And you had to have somebody in the telephone, you know, to transfer the call yeah. into the set. And a lot of that's volunteer based too. So mm -hmm. I don't mean volunteer like oh you don't get paid. I mean volunteer like you're allowed to come in and use, like learn about this stuff, produce mm -hmm. stuff. So it's we still have that that availability here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing I ran into quite a few years ago was um, I think they were having a memorial service for Tony Carruthers, who was a professor, part time professor, been in college, and. I didn't know too much about tripods then. Mm -hmm. So they had some kind of extended program. I was trying to balance this camera on my shoulder for <laughs> this long time, and it, becomes, it became so painful. So oh. why don't you set up this tripod for us and show us how easy it is now to mount your camera on something that's going to hold your uh, pretty easy. <laughs> camera for you. I know we did a 
interesting program last January, and Claude had a tripod. It wasn't a tripod; it was a monopod. <laughs> if that's what you oh, call yeah. it. Oh yeah, just one uh, pole. Mm -hmm. Instead of la several yeah. legs, one one in the middle. And it's much more portable. You know, he could follow the action around from place to place without too much trouble. Yeah, so, so you could mount the. Oh, sorry. Were yeah, you? go ahead. Yeah. So you can mount the camera here, and you can let the camera pretty much support itself. I mean, the tripod supporting the camera. Yeah. So that um, it gives you the ability to keep it stable. It. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to carry it for a long time. You can zoom and everything right here on the tripod. You can incorporate movements into your shots, and it's they're mm -hmm. nice and fluid. You know, nice and smooth. Yeah. So there's there are a lot of advantages to using a tripod for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have really shaky hands like I do, <laughs> when I shoot nature stuff, a lot of the time, even though it's only for you know thirty seconds here and there of flowers blowing in the wind or whatever, I still lug around a giant tripod yeah. on hiking trails with me because I can't oh. hold my hands still for oh, that yeah. long. So I'm uh -huh. quite a fan. Part part of the problem of growing up with still photography is that I never needed to hold my hands still, so I kind of uh, never learned. Yeah, but. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just go quick. Right. Yeah, I hope everybody noticed how quick, quickly Ryan set this tripod up. It must have been about 20 seconds or 40 seconds yeah. to flop the legs down and set it right up. No. Yeah, and you can actually, even if, if someone's using a camera and maybe they didn't get the tripod set up or they're doing some handheld work without a tripod, uh -huh. There are ways I like to teach in the classes too. Um, you can stabilize your shot. You can lean against a wall. Uh -huh. um, I like to teach people they can sort of lock their elbow in on their ribs to hold the camera. You can yeah. rest the camera against your shoulder, your chest, your. I mean, I've even had to rest it almost on top of my head to shoot over crowds. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly tall. Yeah. Um, you just get creative ways to keep a nice stable shot. You can set a camera on a table, yeah. uh, on the floor. Um, there are ways to hmm. there are really there are creative ways to stabilize your shot or get movements you can shoot from a car window roll the window down shoot outside of the window mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean the tripod definitely has many advantages um just bring it with you stabilize yeah. your shot you can even i could even do a two camera shoot myself set one camera on a tripod on maybe a wide shot that shows everything the whole scene or set uh -huh. and then take another camera oh. with either with a tripod or not yeah and then get close-ups or other shots and mm -hmm. incorporate the two together mm -hmm. so it gives you a lot of flexibility yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's good stuff yeah just, just talking about incorporation maybe just say a few words about the editing process you know like if you did two cameras like this and then you wanted to edit them together so you <laughs> saw images of two different cameras at different times. If I were to shoot um, a musical performance, for example, mm -hmm. um, if I used two cameras to shoot a song being played, I would sync the two cameras up. So basically, since it's digital, the cameras will sync nicely, you know? In other words, mm -hmm. um, every movement and everything will occur th at the same time on the two cameras if I match them up. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do for a basic or relatively simple edit, I can, if I take two angles of the same song, one from a tripod, one from handheld maybe. Yeah. I can match the two up. And then sort of like we do in the studio, just cut physically on the camera, or I mean, sorry, on the computer in the mm -hmm. editing software. Mm -hmm. You can click and it's like cutting the old film. You know, if you were oh, yeah. editing film or tape to tape, yeah. you would physically, and with film, cut the film and then match up two different shots. So that's how you edit. Mm -hmm. And we simulate that in a computer by taking that video, the video clip, making digital cuts, yeah. and then matching things up. So you can mm -hmm. cut back and forth between the wide shot, which might show a whole band, and a close-up of, let's say, the guitarist with their solo, or the singer, maybe a close-up of the singer's face. Mm -hmm. And if you cut back and forth, it's that's how professional shows are made. That's how... Um, we have th three minutes left. Um, yeah. That's how. It's just a simple way to get uh, an increased production quality yeah. for your piece. Yeah, it makes me think of the things that used to be said about the knee deep cell cellulose on the end of the room floor. You know, <laughs> before all yeah. this computer stuff, everything had to be you know physically cut out these pieces of cellulose. 
So you'd have, no, just piles and piles of accumulating. The term, the cutting room floor, when people, oh, we found this footage, just leftover scraps from the editing process. Oh, yeah. Behind yeah. the scenes stuff or stuff that didn't make the final cut. Yeah. I'm thrilled to have grown up in an age where I've never had to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Right. There was this linear editing, which would be like VCR after VCR, mm. and you could put in tapes, and on your program, you'd have the final piece. You could record from all these different VCRs, yeah. different uh -huh. clips, yeah. and you'd pause, rewind, start, record, st pause the record, play another one into it, record there, and just mm. layer all these videos together, but you're losing quality every step of the way. Yeah, It's a tedious process. I never had to do it, but I learned mm. about it. Yeah, Sort of messed around with it, but mm. never had to do it for school or anything. So now you just do top quality from beginning to end. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we're about ready to wrap up here. Thank you so much, both of you. Do you have any final words of encouragement to say that people might want to come out? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Come play with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're here, 625 Main Street, Bennington. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, because I did not know that. <laughs> uh, we're across from the old middle school, or near Ramonto's, or the Mexican Connection. Easy to find, there's a sign out front. And we're can... really close to pizza. Oh, lots of pizza places. Yeah. 442-8868. Uh, you can call Darlene, and we can set up times. You can learn about gear, take classes, uh, just take a tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything, really. Yes. That's what we're here for. So, everybody, come on down. Yeah. Make some video. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.